Welcome to WonderCon at Home 2020. My name is Ken Choi, and I am so excited to introduce to the con world veteran actor and all around good guy, Ty Ma. Hey, Ty, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. <laughs> it, now, so is that right? Have you not been to San Diego Comic Con or its sister, WonderCon? You know, I have not. I, I, I don't know what happened, but I've, that's all new to me. I would love to go. I hear everything, you know, everybody talks about it. So uh, have you been? Yeah, actually, uh, I brought our good friend, the belated uh, Elizabeth Sung, several times. So, oh. yeah, could you imagine us people at our age uh, at Comic-Con? We actually had a blast. So, And I'm sure she did, too. I'm sure she did. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I wish I wish she'd have gave me a call. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be sure to have you on a panda at either okay. Comic Con or Wonder Time. All right. In invitation accepted. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is actually an exciting time for you, right? You have a film on Netflix. You have a TV show on Netflix and a movie called Mulan was supposed to be uh, in the box office right now, but it's been delayed because all of that is going on right now. How are you coping? How are you handling things? What are you up to? Uh, you know, all the projects are fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, you know, some of them will be delayed. So you will meet, uh, um, you know, Mulan somewhere down the line. Uh, of course, Tiger Tail, you can see right now at Netflix. And I think um, uh, it's Tiger Tail has been a quite of a bit of a surprise, you know, that, that it, um, it hit a call with so many different people. So I'm, we're very proud of that small project. Um, I was shooting a pilot, uh, the reboot of Kung Fu, before all production was shut down. And um, I think, you know, I guess Kung Fu is probably more of a Comic-Con-ish kind of project. You know, it's a lot of martial arts, a lot of, and, and I'm working with a really exciting group of young Asian American talent. So uh, um, that and obviously, you know, the, the, um, all the stuff that's been happening with the uh, COVID-19 and that the Asian Americans are actually getting some, some flack, you know, that we are the ones who, uh, who brought, the, you know, this particular virus to America. Um, so that that's a that's an ongoing thing, and then of course next month, you know, which starts tomorrow, is the Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. So there will be a host of uh, uh, um, challenges that that hopefully we will overcome and uh, get the word out. You know that that we should be celebrating ourselves. I, I think that's really important, and I think it's in also important that uh, we shine a light on all the. Um, the hate crimes that's been happening to Asian Americans across the globe, not just in America, but really ac across the globe. So I think we need to, to, you know, emphasize the fact that, you know, there's only one race in which is the human race. And I think we need to emphasize the fact that unity is what will defeat this virus, not division. So. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely want to uh, go into the video that you uh, did uh, regarding hand washing, mm -hmm. as well as the projects that you mentioned. But um, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, as far as Mulan, because that's the most, um, I mean, that's the pressing thing, because there's been a little update recently. Uh, the date has been pushed back uh, now for July 24th. Have you mm -hmm. heard anything more about that date? I, I think, you know, the, no, I haven't. July 24th is the, the, uh, uh, the official date. But, you know, things are evolving so quickly. So anything can happen, really. I, and and I, I suppose, really, um, it depends on how everybody is going to open up our theaters. Hmm. So I think it will be a business decision and may even be a bit of a last-minute decision. Because we're not only talking about cinema in North America, we're basically, I mean, I'm sure uh, uh, Disney's looking at the global cinema uh, uh, openings. Uh, and because from what we understand, China's going to open pretty quickly. You know, I think next month or that's tomorrow, right? 
<laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it may happen like next week. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Seems like too, from uh, all the surveys and and all the uh, 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 people who are trying to gauge whether or not there will be an interest in for people going to uh, the cinema, the interest is high. The percentage is high. But I'm just not sure how the exhibitors are going to deal with, you know, the uh, the distancing and and you know, the sanitation. I mean, uh, the disinfecting, you know, of the theaters and stuff like that. You know, whether or not we're going to, you know, be required to wear masks. You know, I don't know. I, I think, I think uh, it'll be interesting to to see what transpires. Yeah, well, a little weight uh, won't hurt anyone. So mm -hmm. I'm um, I'm still very excited, like many people are, to see Mulan. Um, so uh, as a way of introducing you to people who are not familiar with your work and your career, uh, which is hard to believe because uh, on IMDb you have over 120 projects, you have a 40-year-long career, um, you've done independent films, you've done blockbuster films, you've hit TV shows, but you started out on the stage. Do you mm. think um, that gave you a training foundation to be flexible, to take on all these roles? I personally believe that is so. Uh, and and there, there are a lot of reasons for that. I think being, uh, you know, spending the first 12 years, basically, of my career on stage, uh, it gave me a solid foundation. I think it gave me the opportunity to stretch my acting muscles. I think I was, you know, offered some amazing opportunities that I was able to take advantage of. I've done you know, four, five, six characters in one play. I've done plays in rep where I have to, you know, do three or four plays, you know, in a span of two or three months. So all of those things uh, add up. I think, you know, uh, being in front of a live audience, I think you really get a sense of energy because even when you're on set, there are people there. You know, there's, there's the crew and your fellow actors and you have, you have producers and directors and, and, I think being in a live audience, I, I really am very in tune with energy in the room. So I think that's a, that's a, a really a, a powerful tool for actors, you know? And, and the fact that you, you don't have the opportunity to take two on the stage and you really have to understand and deal with things that happen that, um, out of the, the realm of, of what you know, because accidents happen, you know, lighting, set, props, you know, fellow actors, uh, costume, you know, difficulties. And, and you really have to be completely focused and in tune on how to deal with these situations. And I think that also helps us in the cinema and, and television. That's because actually, I, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. That actually um, is one of your trademarks because you're known as someone who's always prepared, always ready to go on set. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of beginning actors who go to cons, uh, figuring out their own way. Can you give them some advice as how you prepare um, when you take on a role? Well, everyone's different. I, I don't want to say my way is the you know or the highway. Uh, I think you know everyone what you need to do is you really have to be honest with yourself and on, on what your need, your, what your prep time is, you know, everyone, again, you know, you really have to gauge also that I think some of the basic thing is not to be distracted, you know, that, that, you know, if you have questions, I believe you need to explore the answers as well. You don't want to go and, and present yourself with only questions. I think you also need to think about if the question is asked and no answer comes back and you have to do something about that. Mm. I think it behoves you to at least have some idea of what you may want to try. You know, so, so I think in that sense, um, uh, you, you, you are on your own. I, I think basically, the, the, also I feel that the more you rely on yourself, the better it is. And then, you know, because if you get help, then that's, a, that's an extra cushion. So but interesting. You, you may not get any help. <laughs> yeah, so you're actually making choices in your head about what the actor uh, 
who could be a big star and not bother to show up to play opposite of you. You're making that choice in your head just so you know you have a backup of what to play against. Well, I mean, I, I, you see, that's not even really the major issue. I mean, you know, not having, I mean, that's never happened to me. But however, if you, if you ever been on a film set, there are some sets where you cannot see the other actor. There's no way because it's so tight. The camera is so tight and you, and you want your eye line to be as close to, to camera as possible so that your, your eyes uh, 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 can be seen and the camera can pick up every little nuance you know, within, within the, the, these two things here, right? So what happens is actors are stacked behind the camera. So all you hear really is their voices and maybe a piece of them. So I think, you know, you really need to know that that may not be an option for you. You know, you may not be able to see your fellow actor in a scene. So, so I think ultimately you, those images need to be in your head. Hmm. You have to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. So are you in a place or do you feel like you're in a place to, that you can uh, choose the kind of role that you want? I've always done that, Ken. Oh, okay. I have never, I have never accepted a role that you've seen me in, 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 the, in the credits that you've seen me, you know, in IMDb that I did not willingly do the job. I have never done a job that I'm not willing to do. Um, the outcome is another matter because, you know, actors have very little control on what the outcome is. You know, you just hope for the best because by the time you're done your work, everybody else starts working because you have post-production, you have sound, color correcting, you know, cut, you know, editing, you name it. Everything happens after your work is done. So, so in, in that sense, I think you need to know for yourself that because you know what happened on the set. So if you see, you know, the final product and you say, wow, that's really representative of what we did and what happened. Because some sets are very difficult. It could be a lot of things. It could be, you know, the fact that you're in the jungle and, 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 and you have all these distractions and, and, you know, people, you know, equipment failing and, and uh, costumes not working. And so, so you know what happened, you know, and if you see the outcome, I tell you, I've seen miracles. I tell you, I've done stuff where I scratched my head and said, you know what, this ain't going to fly. But when I, by, by the time I see it, I said, wow, somebody pulled some miracles. They pull rabbits out of hats, you know? <laughs> I'm serious. And, and then there are some that you say, oh man, this is gonna be amazing. And then you look at the final product and you say, uh, what happened? <laughs> because so, so in that sense, you know, I, I think as an, as an actor, just let it go. You, you can't, because there's so much that's out of your hands, all you can do is give your best performance and be done with it. I know when I'm done, I'm done. I don't think about it. So a lot of times people say, well, do you remember that scene you know, where you did this and that? I'm, I'm looking at them with this blank stare. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's like, uh, not really, <laughs> because I don't have enough room in here. So I have to get done, dump it out, and put other stuff in. <laughs> gotcha. So, so, so that, that's why, you know, sometimes it, it is difficult. For example, because we shot Tiger Tail, um, you know, last year. And now it's on this year, and then, and then we're doing press for Tiger Tail. And sometimes when questions come up, man, I don't really quite know how to answer it. Because it's been some time. And then, of course, we didn't, you know, a, a lot of times we get to screen the film, you know, maybe like a month or two months beforehand. And then, but between that time and the release of the film, you've done a lot of things in between. So it gets muddy. <laughs> Memory's not that reliable, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Especially at our age. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, like, when you were 
in doing 24, you got mm. a rap for that, oh, Time Out only plays bad guys. But mm. during that time, you were doing the Rush Hour movies where you mm. weren't the bad guy. You were actually, you know, a sympathetic character because you're in the first movie, your daughter was kidnapped and that thrust that whole plot line, the whole story. Uh, so, uh, so do you think that uh, that rap of only playing bad guys is because that character in 24 was so memorable mm. to people. I, you know what? It doesn't, I mean, public opinion is public opinion, Ken. We have no control over that either. <laughs> so, so, you know, whatever people think what they think. I know what I did, right? I mean, even within the whole time of 24, that I, I mean, when I did like three, like four seasons of it, so there were a lot of things in between, you know, there are a lot of things that, that, uh, I mean, if there's anything that I'm very proud of is the fact that I have a lot of variety in my work. I have, I have, you know, things that I've done and, and portray characters that are, that are very different. I mean, even in 24, I mean, I never considered that a bad guy. You know, I've always considered 24, you know, I am, the protagonist on the other side. <laughs> I am basically, you know, Jack Bauer's mirror image because whatever I'm doing, whatever actions I take is what he does and it's the actions that he took. So in my mind, I've never played it that way. I mean, I have a job to do. I'm right. head of security for the Chinese, for the Chinese consulate. So if you're going to bust into the, to, to the Chinese consulate, then I have to do my job is to catch you. So, so I, I don't, you know, that's just, that's just me. I mean, you know, but again, the public's the public. You know, they, they will think what they think and do what they do. And, yeah. and I'm okay with it. Well, I think when, you know, that when they brought back 24, there was a collective gasp, like when you uh, <laughs> came on screen, it's like, oh my God, he's back. Yes. Yeah, so that was, I mean, that to me was how uh, memorable that character was, uh, how uh, big an impact. I, I'm, yeah, and I welcome that opportunity because they thought of me enough to say, you know what, this guy's a challenge for Jack. So we want to, to finish the series, you know, with Kiefer that way. And, and I'm flattered. And I, I think also it's, it's a, a lot deeper meaning than what's on the surface because he, this character, is, you know, by the last day, he's been jilted by the Chinese government and, and everybody else. He's basically alone. So in that sense, I, I don't think whatever he was doing, you know, is, is uh, uh, over the top, really. I think, you know, given the fact, the circumstances that he has to face, um, I think it's it's kind of a, a expected reaction from this guy, given what he was, you know, all the skills that he had. So, so in that sense, I, I feel that. And you know what? He wasn't apologetic either, which he is what I it. like. <laughs> I mean, so he did it, and he and he said, "Okay, fine, you got me, and you're gonna, and, and I'm gonna, you know, basically uh, reach a terrible end." But I accept it. You don't see him, you know, really cry about it. Yeah, right. Do you think, <laughs> as, I, I know that you're, uh, you're very political. Um, do you think that um, visibility is just as important as positive images uh, for Asian Americans? Positive image is a funny thing. You know, what is it? So let's just say all of our roles are goody two-shoes. All of all the roles that we play are doctors. What happens? You know, it's not a good representation. I mean, for me, you know, we need variety. We need to be represented in every profession, in every walk of life, you know, because that's who we are in any society. So really, I, I think you need to understand that, that, what we what we don't see enough of we need to focus on you know i have not seen enough of us being the neighbor the normal guy the guy has no skills he doesn't speak 12 languages 
he doesn't he can't kill somebody with a look <laughs> yeah I, I like to see that guy around you know just some 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 guy you know who you you walk out the house maybe not now but in a, under normal circumstances walking out the house saying hello to your neighbor i'm going to work how you doing what do you do i'm an auto mechanic you know i mean that kind of stuff is kind of you know is what i'm what i'm more interested in today that that you know i want to be able to portray your neighbor you know so so, so that would be a positive thing and also quantity is important quality is important but it's not the only thing we need more i mean quantity is 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 uh, because what happens is you know when you have enough product out there then your voice of being represented is greater you know and we are a multicultural multi-ethnic society you know within ourselves the asian american community is multi-ethnic and multicultural so you can't speak of everybody you can't you, you really need that you know the the multitude of voices out there and we still have a long way to go and we're making progress we're making progress we're even gonna we're even gonna have superheroes now too so so it's very exciting it's very exciting yeah it is very exciting but i as a long a lot of people agree that thanks to people like you um mm. that we have had something like crazy uh, rich asians and that we have a presence more of a presence um for asian americans in media so um mm. thank you you know, I, I hope it, you know, that I'd make some contribution. I mean, I don't I mean, there's no way to prove it. There's no way to say, oh, yeah, because you did this. And that's why we got to this place. But I think, you know, there are a lot of factors, you know, sign of the times, uh, the, the, uh, the blossoming of, 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 you know, the need for content, you know, global content. We're not just, I mean, really, it's much more global these days with streaming and stuff. So, so, you know, I think it's just a perfect storm with all this wonderful recognition of, of the uh, Me Too movement, uh, the wonderful recognition of Oscar too white. You know, I think all of it contributes. And the community, our community have changed. Our community are finally coming around and say, you know what, we need to support our artists because these mediums are powerful. These mediums will give you an opportunity to reshape perception. So I think everybody's kind of on board. So hopefully I've made some minor contribution to that. Well, you were just called, um, you know, America's Asian dad by the Washington <laughs> Post. Uh, so I do think that you made a significant contribution, definitely Thanks. for the recent roles that you've had in Farewell mm. and the upcoming Mulan. Um, I, and uh, Tiger Tail as well, that your, um, your presence is very much appreciated. Thank you, Ken. I, I think fatherhood is important, you know, to be represented on screen. Uh, I think, you know, the Asian American male have st are still underrepresented. Uh, I think, you know, not only are we able to highlight, you know, all these different dads, you know, hopefully it will ring true to someone out there and say, you know what, I identify with this guy. I identify with, with, with what, what he's done. Whether or not, you know, it, it, you know, it's good for bad or for indifference. I think if it, if it, it kind of, you know, uh, ring true to someone's core, maybe people can make some adjustments, you know. And maybe people will say, you know what, I've I seen him in these three different dad roles. I would prefer to be this kind of dad that he portrayed as opposed to the other dad. So all of those things are, are, are part of the whole scheme of things, you know? We, we, that, that's what, what makes us whole. That's what makes us, you know, a part of one single race, which is the human race. Right. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, the only problem that I had with the, you know, the title is why not are you called America's dad, plain and simple, <laughs> right? I mean, why put an Asian in there? I mean, when Bill Cosby yeah. was doing his show, you know, this is back in the 80s, not <laughs> current, current affairs, but he was America's dad. So okay. why wouldn't you or Randy Park be called a, a America's dad? I think you, good point, Ken. 
I mean, that's a valid point, you know, and, and I think, you know, particularly with Randall, you know, in, um, with FOB, you know, because it's a TV series. So, so you do have that time, right? And I think if anybody needs to be recognized as, a, as America's dad, it would be Randall. Yeah. So I guess you know? that brings, yeah, definitely. So I guess that brings <laughs> us into the hand washing video that you did. Mm -hmm. um, and you had an experience that prompted uh, you to do that. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, I was approached by the IW group, you know, about all of these anti Asian crimes, hate crimes that's been popping up everywhere. And it just so happened, even before, you know, the, uh, the, the, the attention and the huge outbreak of, of COVID-19. Uh, and this was very early on. And I think it was around the time where um, the first uh, uh, chartered flight that were, that were uh, uh, returned from China, where we were evacuating Americans from Wuhan. I think it was around that time that uh, there was an interview out about people who were working in the Air Force Base and they were being discriminated against and they weren't Asian. You know, they were workers who worked uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Air Force uh, Base and people were shunning them. People say, no, we don't want you to be coming around because I know you work in that base. I don't want, you know, to catch what you got. You could have gotten it, right? So it was really around that time I was going to do some shopping at Whole Foods in Pasadena, and that's where I live. And uh, I was walking towards the entrance, and there's a car that was rolling up really slowly. I thought this guy was going to be courteous and stop and let me walk past and go to the entrance, but that didn't happen because he never stopped. Then he, in the meantime, he's rolling down the window as he's rolling slowly towards me you know, in front of me, he stopped directly in front of me, looked me in the eye and said, you should be quarantined and then took off. And I'm standing there and, and because it's a bit of a, you know, you, you're in disbelief because this is your neighborhood grocery store. I'm not in a strange place, you know, and I'm pretty alert. I'm from New York. I'm used to having, you know, my antennas up a lot more. But in this particular case, my antenna was down because I was basically two blocks away from my house. <laughs> so I felt very safe. And when it did happen, uh, I had a physical reaction, you know, I mean, and physical and physiological. My body basically just went cold. It felt like blood just left me. And I couldn't believe my ears. I felt that I was underwater and it's like this kind of ringing and it's kind of echoing. And then I felt this flush of anger and my blood started boiling and I started screaming at this guy, but he was gone. I was screaming at nobody <laughs> into the air. And then I got the phone call from the IW group about, you know, you know, but I was already aware of all these incidents happening in New York, you know, on the subway, you know, and everything. So I felt that, you know, we really need to do something about it because, you know, uh, uh, that's not going to get rid of the virus by attacking us, you know, and, and to, tell, to tell me that I'm responsible, you know, for something I didn't do and to multiply that, you know, by how many thousands of time, that, that is something that we need to address, you know, and that's why I got involved. And I said, really, uh, I'll, do, I'll do anything, you know, and, and we also want to reach out to, to all the advocacy groups, you know, to, who, who, are, who, are believe, who believes in human rights, who believe in the civil rights, you know, of people needs to join in because silence is not going to help us. And we shouldn't have to do this on our own. I think law enforcement needs to step up to the plate, you know, and when the FBI issued a warning that hate crime against Asian Americans because of the COVID-19 virus, we, uh, they're serious. So if that's the case, 
then law enforcement is, is completely you know, uh, in the loop. They need to do something about it. They need to be more vigilant. You know, uh, they, it, it can't it just all fall on us. You know, we can do what we do. We can vocal, you know, make, make vocalize what our concerns are. But ultimately, we're not vigilantes. You know, what are we going to do? <laughs> Carry guns? <laughs> that, that's not the solution, you right. know? The solution really is about, you know, go unify. You know, unity is what we need, not division, you know? And, and from what I understand, statistically, crime's down everywhere by 30% and 50% and all this stuff. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe law enforcement got some extra time in their hands. <laughs> maybe they can like, you know, maybe a little patrol, you know, certain areas because I'm telling you, Ken, th th these, things, these, these things happen in very specific places. Public transit, you know, major. Grocery stores, major. You know, it, it happens in those places a lot more often than other places. So it tells me something because whatever's happening out there, there is a sense of fear because you can die from this thing. So I understand the frustration, but the fact that you and I are out there on public transit at the same time, we have something in common. Otherwise, why would we be out there in the first place? Right. Right. We should be staying at home. But the fact that we had to go out there, we have common ground. We need to explore that, you know, and law, enforce, law enforcement can help it too. You know, keep an eye on these kind of hot spots, you know, and circumvent, you know, things that, that you know, that may happen and let it, then don't let it escalate. So that's, that's something that, that everybody can do something about. You know. Yeah, well, thank you for lending your voice to the cause. Uh, it's, uh, I, I admire you even more, even if that's possible. So, no, oh, <laughs> thank you. No, really, I, I think it's, it's everyone's responsibility, you know, uh, uh, in order, because in order to, to really um, just eradicate COVID 19, we need everybody. It's a global, it's a global epidemic. It's a pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. you can't do it alone. And, and you can't do it alone in America. You need to do it globally, all around the world. Yeah. You know, so, so I think it's something that, that we, you know, need to reconcile with, you know, as, as, a, as a, a human race. So, so that's something that hopefully, you know, too, is that we're, we're still able to continue to put our product out there that's about us, you know, about Asian Americans, so that you, you know, have a better understanding and all these different facets of who we are. So, so that is gonna, gonna you know, uh, at least contribute to, to bridging some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the fact that, you know, yes, we are different, but we're also very much the same. Well, definitely with The Farewell, which came out last year, it's now mm. a Golden Globe Award winning film, uh, uh, many awards. Did you feel that there was something different about this film that it would click with the American public? No, I, no, Ken. Do you know why? Ken, I've done so many independent films. Some of them never get the light of day. So, we, you know, you don't know. And I believe all of these films uh, uh, have value. They deserve a place. They deserve to be seen. And, and I think it's just a, a, a self-preservation. I do not put too much emphasis and, 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 and too much hope on, on where a, a particular film is going to go and how it's going to impact the audience. Uh, so fair, The Farewell had the opportunity for people to be to to see the film, and also I think the community, you know, played a strong role. You know, they really came out. I think it was they were well prepped, you know, from Crazy Rich Asians, and 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 uh, 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 I think there were a, a couple of other projects that came before us that that really kind of primed our community to be more supportive, and the word of mouth was was uh, very powerful. I think the, the This American Life on NPR 
really made a huge difference. You know, there's a particular audience that are, are much more vocal about, you know, what they like and they want to spread the word. I think that was an important audience too. Uh, the surprising thing is that, that it rang true with a lot of people who are not particularly Asian American, you know? So, so that was a bit of a surprise, a very, very pleasant surprise. And that, that people, uh, uh, identify, particularly with, with uh, Aquafina, because she's so American, you know? And, and I think that is a major change because you now you need to redefine what it means to be all American because she is all American. And she's a hero. Uh, I, you know, I admire her uh, greatly. She's uh, mm -hmm. great for the API community and, you know, the Hollywood community in general. Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk about Heroes because Wu Assassins is on Netflix. Uh, is there any word for a second season on that? Uh, I think Wu Assassins, uh, uh, you know what, Ken, your guess is good as mine because they, it was supposed to, but who knows, everything stopped. <laughs> You know, I think they were talking about, you know, maybe uh, changing the format a little bit, you know, and making movies of the weeks, you know, kind of type of, of, of format instead of a, a TV series. So there have been talks about that and, and they were committed to, to make it happen. Rather, right now, I mean, you know, every production's on pause. So how long of a pause? What, what's going to happen? Because... Uh, people's availabilities are going to be completely turned upside down because I, I was ready to do, you know, finish the pilot of Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have two other films that's all, you know, ready to go. Three other films, actually. All been, you know, we don't know what, what we're going to do now. Because yeah. one film was also for Netflix and that's pushed until next March. And I was supposed to shoot another film in Cambodia and that was supposed to be happening in June which I don't think that's going to happen. And that I believe that the, that the European production. So I don't know how that's going to work, you know, in terms of, you know, what's the protocol, right? Because our business I absolutely have to change because of it. So, and there's another film we're supposed to shoot in New York. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, so really, I mean, the, the, uh, God, every day, Ken, every day, you know, the, the, you know, with this, with this, this unprecedented time that we we live in, changing people are change. You know, things are changing so rapidly. I don't think anybody knows, you know, for sure, what 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 will be. You know, how. I mean, right now we're kind of you know, China and and South Korea's on gone back to production. Hmm. So we're interested in what they're doing. Because from what I understand, and I, I spoke to uh, some people on the other side of the, of the world, is that they have a health passport they need to uh, be a bye by You know, that they've been tested and retested, you know, that they're negative. And, they're, and there's definitely contact tracing and, and all of that is in place. We have nothing. We have nothing like that. Yes. Because, you know, I mean, obviously... You know, there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, and one, one of them is privacy. You know, uh, uh, you know there, you, you, no matter what you do, or how, I mean, if you, you come close to anyone else, you know, cell phone that, that is registered a, a positive uh, 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 COVID um, person, your phone's going to ping. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then that ping goes to some kind of database. And you, you will be contacted and they'll let you know, say, you know what, we need to test you. And then, and then you have to wait because there's an incubation period. Yeah, you have to wait two weeks. Exactly. So yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So, you, you know, what's going to happen? Right. I mean, because right. uh, uh, if you go to, to Asian countries, I mean, Taiwan's completely locked down. You can't yeah. go into Taiwan. Yeah. So, so in China, you have to go into... At once you land, you have to go to some kind of designated hotel, you know, that, that you, as, a, as a, a new arrival in the country, 
you go to that hotel, you're locked down for 14 days. They test you. And one, and you, and then they test you again. You could be negative. You wait the 14 days, they test you again. And then if you test, still test negative, then you are freely, then you're free to go. You know, in South Korea, I'm telling you, it, it's, uh, they also have, uh, 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 contact tracing. It's very much in place. And they also have the health passport, but their, their crew is, is a regular size crew in China. It's limited to 50. So you only 50 people. You can't share tools. You know, they all have to wear masks. Mm -hmm. I think certain departments who, who, who deal with the actors, because obviously we can't wear, wear a mask when we're working. Right. So there may be some, you know, quarantine of the cast. So that we're not exposed exactly to anybody who yeah. knows i mean there's so many things and then you're talking about the departments that really ha have to come in contact with the actors hair and makeup what you you can't have hair and makeup what do your own makeup <laughs> do your own <laughs> hair I, I don't think that's gonna happen yeah right yeah. i mean so 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 what's what's that like what is that protocol i mean right. you know so, you know, man, I tell you, this is crazy. This it is, so is crazy. crazy. I definitely want to move into Mulan because, uh, okay. you know, that's a, a very, I mean, I think um, you probably, the whole cast had a sense of responsibility because the Disney film was so beloved. Um, and this is a live action remake of Mulan. Uh, did you get that sense um, where, you know, you, you knew you had to do a good job for the audience? I think the cast was definitely committed. We understand what's at stake. And, and not so much that, that uh, um, there are so many things about this project that, that is important to all of us. Number one, it is a, a, a folktale that is so kind of, uh, uh, it's so important in in the uh, Chinese culture, that's one. Uh, second, the uh, money that's devoted to this project is uh, unprecedented. You know, we've we've done projects, you know, uh, that's meaningful, but we're talking about a couple of million here, a couple of million there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's tough, you know, to do those things, right? Now you have a major studio who is willing to support a project that is uh, with, with really uh, an impressive budget, you know, um, and, and to hire some of the, the best and the brightest in the business to, to make it happen. Um, yes, we do yeah. feel the responsibility. Yeah, which and, includes and, you, the bright and the best, because uh, we are actually going to uh, be cut off soon because of the time allotment. Uh, okay. But thank you for uh, coming to WonderCon at home. Thank you for being a part of this. And thank you for, again, all that you do for the industry. And thank you for being a friend to me. I much appreciate it. Ken, you're, I mean, I can't find a better half hour to spend with anybody than you. All right, buddy, you take care and I'll see you really soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Bye. Ty. Bye -bye. Okay, you take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. All right, thank you for joining uh, WonderCon at Home 2020 um, with Taima, and uh, we hope you uh, uh, come to the con really soon.